How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Forza Motorsports. On the latest Forza monthly live stream, we have just been given some gameplay and a ton of information about Forza Motorsports. We have learned so much more about the game, about how customization works, credits, car points, new assists, how just there's just so much to discuss. I'll have a brief list on screen what we're going to talk about today. Let's jump straight into the new Forza Motorsport information that we now have. We'll start off talking about the home screen that we previously saw teased a couple of days ago. We've been told that we will actually be able to display four of our favourite cars in our garage within the home screen in sort of car bays. You'll be able to pick one car to sort of display mainly in the middle and then we can pick a further three cars to display sort of in the background in your my home garage main menu screen. You know what I'm trying to say. This is probably what the place in car bay button does that we previously saw a couple of days ago. Now we know. The race option on the main screen takes you to this here where we can select career, which is the builder's cup, which we're mainly focusing on today. Featured multiplayer, free play, rivals and private multiplayer, as you would expect. We, in, we can also see in the top right hand corner our first glimpse at credits. Yes, credits are in the game and there is also another type of currency as well called car points. More on that later on. But this is an ideal time to mention there are absolutely no microtransactions in this game. You can't buy credits, you can't buy car points, you can't buy any other form of currency with real money. Also kind of related, there are no wheel spins, no loot crates, nothing of that sort. There's nothing to do with that. No leveling up, getting wheel spins, that's all been sort of brushed out. Let's continue on to the Builder's Cup, which is the main career mode. We can see here that you get a bunch of tours that you can choose from. We have Modern Tour, Enthusiast Tour, Power Tour and Legacy Tour. And each tour has different series that you can take part in, like Vintage Hatch, retro tuners classic sport so on and so on each one of these series maybe has four five six races in and it's worth noting that each race will have a practice session so you can sort of practice and get used to your car if you're enjoying this video guys enjoying the new forza facts please do consider subscribing we cover forza horizon 5 and falls motorsport you won't miss anything Let's continue. Now the way that they have designed this career mode is a lot like the olden days, Forza Motorsport 3, Forza Motorsport 4 kind of style, where you can't just really jump into any car you want straight into the deep end. And the career mode is all about picking a car and trying to fall in love with it basically. Really learning what that car needs, leveling it up, upgrading it and just going to town on that one car because the upgrading system in this game is very car specific. Again, we'll touch on that in a minute. A bit of gameplay on screen right now of what the sort of main menus look like as you're transitioning from the main menu into a practice session, I guess. You can see there's a couple of difficulty screens. We'll be deep diving into them in a minute as well. But as you get into the free practice session, here's where we have a lot more information. We can see what the speedometer looks like. You've got the gear indicator, the miles per hour, the laps, the current lap, the usual stuff. Here's where we can now touch on the car level, which is in the top right hand corner, which is one of the main focuses of this game. Now, each car in your game will have its own specific, unique car level. Even if you have two of the same car, their car level will still be different depending on how much you've leveled it up. Now, you will level up your car when you're driving it doesn't matter where you're driving it free play practice a race doesn't matter where you're driving your car you will get xp for from it while you're using it now we can see on screen in this in particular practice session the lap was sort of separated into mini sectors i guess you could say sort of per corner and the game was rewarding this car xp based on how well they were taking each corner and each sort of mini sector so it basically means that the better you're doing at racing, the better driving line, if you're hitting the apex, if you're getting everything bang on, you'll get more XP than just sort of driving it around aimlessly. Do you know what I mean? Now, each car level maxes out at 50. So 50 is the top level for every car. And it will take roughly two to three hours of driving to max out a car fully and maybe one and a bit hours to get to level 30. So this really, it really encourages you to drive I guess as good as you can and to learn the car, to learn how it handles and to then upgrade it 
Later on in the clip, we've got a little bit of a view of what the time of day changes look like. Now, this was sort of in a developer mode, so this isn't actually possible. You can't just instantly change the time of day, but it just goes to show how good the game looks. Let's carry on to what the game looks like after practice when you want to further on to a race, which says go to race, event, car, difficulty, settings, and exit. Now, if you go to the race, this is where the first difficulty screen comes up, where it asks you, what grid position you want to start in. So you can pick your grid starting position and your payout and rewards will be adjusted depending on where you start. So if you pick to start in first place, obviously you're not gonna get as many credits as if you pick to start last and need to make your way through the pack. Now this is where the game's difficulty and payouts are adjustable because assists, you know, like having driving line on or off, ABS on or off, traction on and off, manual with clutch, automatic, them kind of assists. Those assists still exist and there's actually a lot more in this game. They've added loads more assists, loads more settings, audio assists, they've just added so much. But none of them assists will now alter your payout in races. The only way to get an increased payout within races is to change the difficulty like on screen. So your grid position is one part of the difficulty in the payout you get. But if we go to the next screen, we can see that there is more difficulty settings, such as the AI skill, so how difficult your opponents are. That will also adjust the, the payout that you're going to get at the end of the race. And we can see that there are rule sets as well, which also increase your payout. So if you want rewind to be on, rewind to be off, um, penalties, tyre and fuel wear, damage, that all makes a difference to it as well. So that is how you adjust payouts in this game by the rule sets, the AI skill, and the grid positions and stuff like that, rather than the assists. Once you proceed to the race, we can see what it looks like when you're just about to start a race. You can view all of your opponents, see what car they're in, see what they're wearing, um, you can't undress them. And then you proceed to the race, and obviously the game just looks amazing. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on this myself. Obviously we're covering more of the details in this, so obviously I'm showing you the gameplay, but I'm talking more about the details, since that's what matters to most people, I would say. Now obviously, after you do races, you get your credits according to what difficulty you had it all on. You, want, you level up your driver level. Now it's not known what you get for leveling up your driver level because there's no wheel spins and stuff like that. This is what the upgrade and tune shop looks like. You have options for performance, tuning, setup manager, and to continue to the next race. Um, but we're gonna focus on the car points now, as I said. If we look here, we can see an example of the Nissan Z and the engine modifications. We can see that we have unlocked oil and cooling and the flywheel, but the other ones are locked. Now, you cannot just buy a car and fully upgrade it. You have to level up the car and actually unlock each category by leveling it up. Remember how I mentioned that level 50 is the max level? Obviously hitting level 50 is where you will have every upgrade unlocked. And this is where the car points come into play. Now as you level up your car from one to two to three all the way to 50, you will get car points. Now the car points is what you spend, or not quite spend, to get these upgrades. Now, let's say I spend 500 car points on a suspension for the Nissan Z. I do a load of other upgrades as well, and I change my mind and I want to change it up a bit. I can go back and take off the suspension and I will get my 500 car points back. So when you're using these car points to use engine upgrades and upgrade your car, you're not spending them, you're allocating them which means that it's obviously not credits you're using to upgrade your car with, it's the car points. The credits in the game are only used to purchase the cars with, and the car points are used to upgrade the to upgrade the car with. Now a little bit more information about the car points. The car points are exclusive to every single car. So if you get 500 car points available on one car, you can't spend them on another car, even if it's the same car. There are things to help you out, such as car discounts. So if I was to get the Nissan Z, max it out to level 50, fully upgrade it, make it really pimp, and I want to go buy another Nissan, it will give you a slight discount on other Nissans because I've leveled one up. Now, I presume that would work with every other manufacturer as well. Everything's either been built from the ground up or remastered, everything down to slipstreaming physics, 
fuel physics fuel will now have weight and it will determine the position of where the fuel is on the car what the fuel weighs how much fuel's left slipstreaming is now affected from how big the car is if it's a small car it's we now have adjustable fov lots of cool stuff and i can't wait to get my hands on it that's everything we had for today guys in terms of the forza motorsport news this game looks incredible it is just it is so different from forza motorsport 7 in every way it's almost as if it's a different title I suppose it is a different title. You know what I mean. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most in the comment section below. I'll see you all later.